A great Disney film is only as good as its villain. Everyone loves a hero, but let's be honest for a moment. Where would those heroes be without a wicked villain thwarting their heroic ways? This week, I take a look at who's best at being bad. It's number 10! Seriously, Jafar must have been suffering from a midlife crisis here. He tried to kill our hero. He tried to take over Agrabah with magic. He hypnotized the Sultan on many occasions. And he tried to marry the Princess Jasmine. It's number nine. Dr. Facilier from The Princess and the Frog was a pretty creepy guy, no doubt. I just have to wonder where he got his degree from. He wanted to control New Orleans and promise the voodoo spirits the souls of the living as his payment. Of course, I think we know how that turned out, huh? Number eight. The Evil Queen from Snow White. What qualifies her, you might ask? Her fascination with murder, of course. Perhaps she would have been better off trying some name-brand cosmetics to help her keep the illusion of youth. Seven. Ursula from The Little Mermaid. She tricked poor Ariel into giving up her voice for her one true love. Of course, Ursula totally vamped it up to trick Eric into proposing to her. That wasn't the worst part of it, though. What was up with that creepy garden of hers? Keeping her victims as pets? That certainly qualifies to be on this list. Six, Madame Medusa from The Rescuers. Sure, diamonds are a girl's best friend, but risking the life of a poor little orphan just so you could obtain your shiny little bauble is pretty reprehensible. Number five, Scar from The Lion King. I can understand why he'd be miffed, and I certainly understand his motives. After all, he was the next in line to be king, but then some annoying little fuzzball gets in the way. He then plots to kill the king and said fuzzball, taking Pride Rock for his very own. Number four. Being immortal certainly isn't an easy task. Just ask Mother Gothel from Tangled. She kidnaps a baby and raises it as her own, keeping the child locked away in a tower just so she could retain her youth. Again with youth, has none of these ladies heard of a cosmetics counter? That doesn't really qualify you as parent of the year, but it certainly qualifies you to be here. Three! Animal cruelty is certainly no laughing matter. But to Cruella de Vil, it didn't seem to matter. Her fascination with coats knew no limits, even if it meant skinning a puppy or two. Not cool, lady. Definitely not cool. Two. For most people, if they get fired or, you know, let go from a job, they would, you know, they would look for other employment. But not Yzma from Emperor's New Groove. Her quest for power and control failed on so many levels, but she did it with a certain amount of style and flair. Of course, it didn't hurt that she was voiced by Eartha Kitt, one of the original Catwomen. Simply perfect. Number one! And he certainly deserves to be on this list, and he certainly deserves to be at the top of it. Hades from Hercules. He was forced to rule the underworld by his brother Zeus. Of course, he wanted to rule Mount Olympus, and tried to kill Hercules in the process. He came awfully close, but in the end he failed. What made Hades great, though? was his dark humor and the voice of James Woods, who brought the character to life. <laughs> so to speak. 
Of course, these were my own personal favorites. What are some of yours? If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to thumbs up and give a comment if you're so inclined. Till next time, I need to get going. Evil never rests.